Hi, friends and saints of Cross Within Church. Glad that you're viewing this. My name is John Sutherland. I'm the privileged pastor of Cross, and I say privileged because I serve this wonderful congregation. And I'm joined this afternoon by our wonderful congregational president, Pam Miles, and we're here to talk about the congregational meeting that's going to be happening on the second Sunday of Easter, which would be April 11th, after our 9 a.m. worship in the parking lot. And that meeting is a crucial meeting for everyone who can be there. Please, please be here because we want to upgrade our audio-visual equipment and system, and we need your approval to make that upgrade. You may be asking, okay, why the upgrade? I'm going to transition over to Pam, who wrote a wonderful letter already, but we can give us a little bit more detail in this format. So, Pam, why the upgrade? Well, the upgrade is needed. We are working in a new world. With COVID, we found that with all the hindrances it gave us, it also forced us to think outside the box. We had to find new ways to provide a worship experience, not only for our congregation, but for our community. Through some gracious gifts, we were able to do a bridge with the system we have now. We thought, oh, in a couple of months, this will be have blown over, we'll be back to normal. Here we are a year later, we're still not there. We're still having to work remotely to provide worship services for everyone. With this new system, we can make that feel like you are a part of the worship service, that you're not disconnected from the church that way. It will improve the presentation, it will improve the sound quality, because right now the, uh, everything is picked up through our camera versus the new system where it will be fed directly so that the sound is clearer, the PowerPoint is clearer, the colors are more true instead of everything having a blue hinge tinge to it, it will, the true colors will come through and the sound quality will be much better. Um, this system will allow our congregation to remove barriers so that anyone can come to worship. Whether they're here or not, they can tune in regardless of where they're at. Our snowbirds, those that are homebound, if you're sick, had surgery, can't, can't leave the home. If um, we have people that for whatever reason are not comfortable coming into church, they can get that church experience and hear the word of God, that message we're trying to provide to them without the nervousness of walking into a church for the first time. And I want to pick up on that because, you know, Scripture tells us to be as wise as serpents, as gentle as doves, that we're called to learn the ways of the world in our ministry and evangelism. And whether we like it or not, audiovisual ministry is here to stay. Audiovisual is a new reality in our world. We go to the doctor now online, and that is not going to go away after the pandemic. A lot of folks during the pandemic discovered that committee meetings and work meetings go much more efficiently online or in a meeting, and so those meetings will not return to face-to-face -face encounters. Um, a lot of schooling will also continue to be hybrid as well. Technology, audiovisual um, communication is our new reality. It's here to stay. Um, it's what the world knew often before the church did, that really to reach the masses we have to have a visual audio presentation that is the best that it can possibly be right now we're very very grateful for the donations that made our temporary setup possible but as pam alluded we're not true to the source our sound is skewed and so the musicians here do not sound nearly as good streamed as they do in person our colors all have a blue tinge it's not true to the source new equipment will allow us to be true to the source our true colors will show, as well as you know, our true sound will be transmitted as well. But also the reality is with evangelism, there are people who are just not comfortable stepping into church doors. This may be a way for folks to hear the gospel for the first time, the good news of Jesus Christ, and hopefully through this ministry um, have the courage to come into the doors. But if not, it doesn't matter. We're reaching them. You know, we're called to go out into the world to make disciples of all nations. And, you know, the original disciples used their feet. We're going to be using our feet, but we're also going to be using the airwaves. And we're going to go out in the world 
and offer not only the recipients the best product possible, but we have to think of it as like a first fruit offering with intent. You know, when we think about stewardship, offering is supposed to be our first fruit. That means we're supposed to think about it. And when we think about it, we're thinking, what are we doing exactly? And when if it's a first fruit offering, it's with intent. And with its intent, we also want to give the best that we can for the glory of God. And with the new system, we can do that. As Pam said, there's a lot of people for various reasons who cannot simply be here on a Sunday or Wednesday. But now we have the opportunity to go to them. All too often the church thinks about people coming here. That's not what Jesus meant for us to do. Jesus commissioned us to go out into the world. And this is a way for us to do it. But you know, pastors, we can ramble on forever, so I'm going to turn it back to Pam. Well, and it's not only a way to reach new people, but for our own congregation. Mm -hmm. Our snowbirds who go to Florida or Arizona in the winter can still stay connected to the congregation and not miss Christmas worship, not miss the children's program, not miss on all those things that they uh, traditionally have to miss because they're gone for the season. Um, there are so many ways that this ministry will help, and it won't be uh, restricted to just our services. We can do baptisms, funerals, weddings. Um, starting next Monday, we have our Mental Health Monday events that we'll, we'll be able to stream with that as well. And that's another outreach to our community um, that we can provide. And this ministry through audiovisual will help make that possible. And again, take down all those barriers so that if you're not available during that time, you can still see it. If you're not here physically, you can still be a part of it. And I think that's so important going, looking forward in how that we present that to people so that they get the word of God in whatever way works for them. Thank you for bringing that up because I was thinking about the life milestone events because I know this year all of us have missed loved ones' weddings, funerals, confirmations, baptisms. And, you know, when the pandemic goes away, that doesn't necessarily mean that other life circumstances won't be in the way of us attending these events in person. Right. And so if we can say, hey, this confirmation service will be streamed, godparents who live across the country or even across the world can say, hey, I can watch live and feel like I'm there. Right. Or if my great-granddaughter is being baptized and I can't leave the home, I can still have someone set it up so I can see it live and feel like I'm present and participating in that. So I think, you know, we have a wonderful opportunity with new equipment to give these gifts to people who normally would want to be here, but for various circumstances cannot be here. But now they can be through the screen, which I think is just an awesome thing. It gives me goosebumps thinking about how we can reach people that way. It is. It's exciting to think that we can provide that ministry for people, not only in our congregation, but our community and world. Uh, I'm very excited about it, and we really need our congregation to support this idea. Um, so we are uh, definitely need your support and need you to come to the meeting on uh, Sunday, April 11th at 1015, following the service, so that we can have a discussion, answer any questions people have concerning the new audiovisual system. Our council did not rush into this. We put a lot of time and a lot of effort, a lot of thought, a lot of bids, a lot of going back and asking companies for revisions, for updates, for explanations, so that we had a good handle on what we were getting. Um, and we feel like this is the best proposition for our church. Right. And we do have it figured out financially. I think we should mention that as well. Yes, we that, do. You know, it's not going to put us um, in, the, in the proverbial, you know, debt basement by any means. The funds are already here and figured out about how to do this. We just need your approval. But by the way, if you are thinking about offering a special gift, please, you know, don't take it away from the general offering right. or the building fund because those are still in dire need of your help. I shouldn't say dire need, but they'll always be in dire need because those are ongoing ministries or funds. If you are making a special gift, we request that you don't take it away from that normal giving, but be something in addition to that as well. And if you have an idea, just let us know ahead of time what that fund would be before the meeting so we can present more accurate figures at the meeting as well. Yeah, that would be great. 
Um, so I know some of our groups here at church have donated to the program, um, but we would like to present a complete financial picture for you at the meeting, um, and that is still coming together. But it will not come from our general fund. It will not be taken out of our building fund so that uh, you can rest assured that this is money that um, will only multiply in its blessings to our congregation. Absolutely. Well, I think we probably covered all the bases, don't you? I think so. All right, well, thank you for coming in, Pam. I appreciate it. And thanks for watching. You folks rock, each and every one of you. And please, please, please come to the meeting on April 11th. It's kind of funny because normally the second Sunday of Easter is in the church known as Low Sunday um, <laughs> because it seems like after Easter's excitement, we're back to normal. But this is going to be a really exciting, wonderful Sunday. Let's pack that parking lot and have a great meeting. We look forward to seeing you there. Thank you.